So the Nomadic Art Gallery began a year ago, uh, actually a year and a half ago. Um, we've been on the road since January last year. But the idea for a Nomadic Art Gallery came, uh, actually we were in Berlin, and Arthur was organizing his last exhibition uh, in Europe at that time. And so Arthur has been very involved in uh, the art scene in Europe, both in Belgium, in Romania, in Germany. But the, the, the practicalities of organizing exhibition was always a, a very big hassle, finding a right spot, um, communicating with the artists, getting all the artworks uh, to the place. And so since we both uh, love to, to, to travel and organizing exhibition art, we thought of like trying to fit everything together in one project. And so that's how the idea for a nomadic art gallery emerged. Uh, and so, yeah. That's awesome. Um, and whereabouts have you been? Uh, we have been uh, actually all over the country. Um, we started out, uh, so the gallery was built in uh, Waiheke. And uh, we started out uh, in Auckland, our first exhibition in uh, Takapuna. And then we went down to Hamilton and to Wellington, New Plymouth, uh, east coast of New Zealand, to the South Island. So Northland even, apart from the west coast mm. in uh, New Zealand, no, we have sort of been covered the yeah. country. Yeah, covered the country. I, did you say you're going down to the South Island next week? Yes, yes, but most probably we will not go to the west coast because it will be um, quite. We will be quite limited in time. Mm. So now it's mostly the the, mo the the biggest aspect of the project now is the outside of the truck. Yeah, which is really to getting the truck whole covered. Um, yeah, making so you know how you've covered the outside of the truck. Do you invite artists to come and put artwork on there? Yeah, so it's quite a curated uh, outside. Uh, we've been researching a lot of artists uh, during uh, during our time here and Arthur has been selecting artists along the way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's really a sort of a profound reflection on uh, sort of the modes and sides for artistic production. And um, yeah, it, it, it really goes around and it reflects on, on the institutions of the art world as well. Um, also the reception of the aesthetic, which is to totally different on a truck. Yeah. And that all in relation to sort of the the social, social, cultural conditions of a country makes it a real I like that. unique project. Good narratives. So if I just came along with my vivid and drew on it, would you even notice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We look at the, uh, we spend every second of our okay, day with the truck. Right, right. 24 hours a day. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's so very much controlled. It. And so, you know, when you go down the South Island, do you work with um, galleries or artists down there and they're expecting you to come down? Uh, yeah, we, we are going down to, uh, because we have uh, a side project going on as well, but we are go going down to, um, to visit a few artists. And uh, since our exhibitions are over now, we're not working with any galleries anymore, but we worked with the Blue Oyster in uh, Dunedin for a video art, international video art uh, exhibition. So can you tell me about some of the exhibition spaces you've, or people, galleries you've worked with and also how did COVID affect you? Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a really interesting point because before the, so the project started before the pandemic and so we mostly worked with big events so such as the Hamilton Garden Arts Festival. We also were on the Pride Parade uh, of Wellington and we were supposed to be at the Cuba Duba Festival. But then of course after the lockdown all events uh, were cancelled mm. and so it was really difficult uh, to actually Find a, find a place where to, to do that. So we decided to mostly either do it on ourselves or to actually use our space as a sort of, um, uh, to, to, how would you explain that? As a sort of... Um, to use the inside or the out? To use the inside of the space to actually help also other spaces to ah, get really, more to people. Really, yeah. like, yeah, to clinch because, on. Because, because so of the flexible nature of, of, of our gallery, like now we are sitting in the middle of, yeah, of the wharf, like close to, Frank Kids Park, and that's really the beauty about it. You can sort of bring art to the people and sort of create the exhibition and come to a selected audience that would normally not go out to see art and sort of confront them with it directly, directly uh, which was really yeah, interesting. And especially with the public interventions we did, um, it, it, it showed us how versatile and how, um, yeah, how fantastic it is to, to go around promoting art both inside and outside. Yeah, I love the idea, it's so nimble. So what kind of exhibitions have you had inside the back of the truck? Uh, so yeah, we, we have 
because our it's a truck and the gallery is in the truck, we decided to go with one uh, overarching uh, narrative, narrative. And so it's uh, eight teams that are related to life. And so, yeah, the first team was Bert. Um, the second team was Growth. The third team was um, uh, freedom, freedom, then Alienation. Um, then we had also an exhibition uh, uh, around love, nostalgia and death. And each of these teams were differently concretized. For example, for freedom, we had um, we covered the whole truck in canvas at the International Pride Parade. And so we worked with a body model who sort of danced around the, the inside of the truck and let uh, spectators sort of help her fill the inside of the truck, sort of a, so a freedom of expression oh box wow. almost. All spectators could also paint both the artist, the model, as the truck yeah. itself. So that was quite amazing. Yeah, and then we had like, for example, alienation that was during the lockdown. Alienation, I think a lot of people were sort of wondering why and how and wh what's happening. So we decided to, to have an online exhibition. Mm -hmm. Uh, and is it still online? We could go and see it. Still yeah, online. it's still oh, it's yeah. still online. So still online. Up. Yeah, and um, yeah, and, and then we, the the video artist that was quite interesting as well. In, yeah, that was for um, love. Okay. Love. Time is love. There, there was it, it's there is so many exhibitions that that really happened and they all clinch onto each other and they are sort of very universal universal emotions themes mm. and um, yeah that's also sort of what we wanted to aim for to make it really accessible yeah so like looking at it now you've got Hori yeah how did you meet him uh, so we we are uh, good friends with uh, the mi like Milarki this side um, an artist and from New Plymouth yeah an artist yeah. from New Plymouth really sort of for us a bit the Banksy of New Zealand <laughs> and uh, yeah he said like yeah uh, Hori down in Otaki he's doing really interesting uh, stuff he's not shy of uh, yeah, of controversial issues. Um, he he has really something to say. Awesome. Uh, and so we decided to contact uh, Hori and yeah, give him a platform for uh, the curators of Wellington and sort of yeah, work work on that with Hori and, and sort of feel it, it, it sort of it, it is I think for the exhibition teams mostly related to that. Like it's especially yeah. the, the ones the caged in prison is about, like about the, oh, yeah. the high system. number of yeah. uh, Maori people like statistically in prison um, so it, it's really yeah okay. related and, uh, to and, and, thank you. and coming down to how we met um, Hori I think this really sheds light also on the spontaneity spontaneity of our project and how it's really all a sort of snowball effect we go from from one person we go to the other mm. and it's a very exactly yeah. and that's the beauty every artist is really connected through the truck Kia ora, thank you Kia for ora, seeing sorry. us today. <laughs> hey, um, you've been called an outsider in the art scene. Do you think you are? I'm not quite sure. I, I'd say I, I am, yeah. Mm. Um, probably um, because I can be a bit more controversial than a lot of other people. Yeah. But um, Do your own I'm thing. still here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, think you are. Yeah. You're pretty relevant and pretty present. So, whereabouts are you based? Um, based in Otaki in Kapiti Coast. Um, yeah, just a little fatty toy, uh, fatty toy hori. So you've got. Um, I know you sell artwork and clothing. Do you represent other artists in there as well? Yep, we've got a bunch of uh, Māori and Pākehā artists from all around the motu. Um, they're the same Kopapa based um, artists, so all are a bit kind of edgier <coughs> than um, than your normal things. But um, yeah, well, normal. What's normal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, just all kind of the same type of um, kind of kopapa. Yeah, Otaki is such a great place to be um, stationed as well. So, what's some of your favourite work that you've created uh, in the past? Yeah, um, been working on these weaving pieces off and on, um, going bigger and um, bigger and bigger with them, and trying to um, learn how to get them properly dialed down. Um, yeah, that, that's where I'm at at the moment. Or, but also kind of looking at different um, different issues that kind of uh, surround our Māori people and, and, 
and issues that affect all of us in Aotearoa. Yeah, because um, you did a collab with Tommy, didn't you? And you had a show up in Auckland? Yeah, we did uh, three kind of exhibitions last year. Um, one in Ruatuki with Billy Apple. That's right. And then we did another one in Otaki, uh, which was the Eho, which was a kind of collab piece. And then we had... Uh, the uh, trespassers will be eaten in Auckland. Oh, uh, yeah, I loved the one in Otaki and you hit those heads. Oh, they the were amazing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah, stunning. Yeah. I really like those. I think I've got those. one in my bag. Yeah. I just carry it around, <laughs> eh? Hey, and um, so can you tell me about this work, this coat of arms, the new piece that you've done? Yep, the Koti of Arms. Uh, basically, we are re looking at the uh, over representation of Māori within our prison system and kind of looking at the, the long kind of colonial arm that kind of keeps our our people locked up, um, you know, our males represent kind of 50% and our females 63% of um, the prison rate. So mm. it's kind of looking at that kaupapa, which is quite close to my heart, um, yeah. and our people, um, yeah. but, but kind of making people aware that it actually affects all the people in Aotearoa, not just Māori. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the whole, um, the whole kind of look at that whole um, Kaupapa, which is, yeah, which it's is really good too that you can speak to that through art and bring awareness to people by using art as a platform. And I like I was just as a segue thinking about um, decriminalisation of yeah. marijuana. Yeah, I'm hoping that that will get a whole bunch of those Maoris out of prison. Yeah, well, that's that's a huge that's a huge one. That, yeah, um, you know, in two weeks, such we find a minor out. offence, really. Well, yeah, well, you know, um, like I said, you know, my dad, he, you know, did a lag for the for the thing. Mm. Um, so that's. So it's quite close, you know, um, yeah. for selling rungwa, basically, yeah. which is, um, you know, I mean, obviously it was against the law in, mm. in Ka te Whareherere. Mm. So, um, you know, now that I've got my own kids, um, you know, who are Māori, kōtero and tama, it's, it's a big issue for me um, because, you know, the system is quite, um, there's quite a lot of racism within that system. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why we're doing that. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. Thanks for your time, Hori. Kapai. All right. Thanks.